Hello mortals, welcome to Life of Thor Movie Reviews. In today's debut episode, we will be reviewing none other than... Thor. Because how else are you going to start a Thor's movie reviews without reviewing his first movie? Albeit it was very bad, irregardless. So let's hop right in to the thoughts for which I had of this autobiographical documentary. Number one, Darcy's glares remind me of Hella's. Wink, wink. Number two, those trucks hurt like hell when you get hit. Doesn't matter if you're a god or not, pain is pain. Number three, how did the Jotuns gain access to the Bifrost in Norway? Even my producer has no idea. It's a plot hole, I say. It is a plot hole. Number four. I do not remember Asgard ever being this shiny. Number five. Look how young I look. Ha ha ha. Ah, such an innocent little fellow. Since we're still early here in the film, I want to point out how I love that Fandral becomes charming on Once Upon a Time, and he plays it greatly, I might add. I thoroughly enjoy watching that show. Until Jane got into it, and then it just got awkward. Uh, number seven. My accent sounds funny in the beginning of the film. Well, I want to know why. You see, it just doesn't flow well. There's a part where he goes, This was an act of war! Yes. Yes, it was. So much so, they made me ruin my own feast. No one ruins feast. Number nine. I love Sif. Do not tell Jane. Number 10. I loved this trip to Jotunheim. Such a fantastic view. Great fight. The aftermath, however, not so much great or loved. Number 11. Odin was very pissed because of this trip to Jotunheim. As you can tell in the film. I mean, you know. He banishes me, he tells me to silence, I'm not worthy of my loved ones. He takes from me my power, it's just... Just cruel and unusual punishment. Number 12. When Darcy hits me with that mini lightning machine, it hurts immensely. I was highly surprised by how volatile it felt. Fried my brain for a little bit. Also, knocked me unconscious. No, I'm just kidding. It did hurt. I was highly surprised. I did not go unconscious. This movie makes me out to be weak. Oh look, number 13. Why do they keep playing me as weak? Damn you, Marvel! I do not approve. Number 14. It's that damn truck again. I do not understand why they keep hitting me with this truck. Number 15. Loki finding out his true parentage is a tough scene to watch. Although, all of the bad things he has done in the past, or will do in the future, whether it be movies or what you know now, I do love him. He is my brother. And his pain was highly felt in this. Number 16. In all seriousness, though, Tom Hiddleston is a fantastic Loki. Could not have picked a better actor to play him. It's just great. And his name, Tom, is a great name. Number 17. I enjoy these jokes. Drink. I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! <laughs> Another! Uh, Darcy has no last name. Uh, she's a political science major in a space internship. I'm sorry, Hella. You cannot fool me. Number 19. Let's be honest. This Earth stuff is very boring. Number 20. Loki is king. is straight from the comic book. Uh, it's a fantastic view, and I'm so, so happy they put it in there. Except for the fact that he is taking my throne. <laughs> Number 21. I loved fighting these mortals, because I love to win. Number 22. A fleeting appearance by Hawkeye. <laughs> Shocking. Number 23. Loki. I cannot believe... That you let the Jotuns in to Asgard. Furthermore, I cannot believe you went to Jotunheim and made a deal with them. 
albeit spoilers. He didn't follow through with it, spoilers over. Does not matter. Also, this is the first time I'm watching this autobiographical documentary, and it is highly surprising the liberties they took with my life. Number 24. Heimdall always does what's right, even if it disobeys the direct command of his king. Yet he hasn't been banished, father. You prick. T number 25. The Destroyer is a legendary weapon, yet Sith and the Warriors 3 did not know that it could rearrange its shape. How? I agree. Yes, it is. Yes, it is a plot hole. Number 26. Secondly with the Destroyer, Thor takes no damage from it whatsoever. And he destroys it with only one blow. How? The Destroyer is a weapon that can rival Thor, but it has apparently been bitch made for the MCU. It's a plot hole I say, and I do not approve. You know, it really grinds my gears that they keep doing this to my life. But it's neither here nor there. I'll surpass it. Number 27. Always the tricks to that Loki. Making a deal with the Jotuns and betraying Laufey his own blood. It's like Laufey knew no better. What a moron. He is truly the weak one. Fun fact, Thor has screamed no in each of his first three appearances. Thor, Avengers, and the Dark World. Number 29, finally this movie is over. I mean, let's be honest here, not a great effort. Not at all. They should have gone all out with it. Instead, they focused on Earth, trying to introduce me to you mortals. Furthermore, they made Thor in the movie seem far more weak, comparative to how I truly am, and I do not approve. Now I'm sure you're wondering what my actual thoughts as a whole on the movie are. It was alright. It's not a great effort. It was fun seeing Thor finally being on the screen. Uh, they took a lot of liberties with my life. Um, I enjoy the actor who played him. Anthony Hopkins, excuse me, Sir Anthony Hopkins is a great father. Uh, yeah. However, that being said, I will still give it three Mjolnirs out of five. Only because of the fight in Jotunheim. Seriously, this is the only thing in the movie that's great. There you have it for the first review here on Life of Thor's Thor's Movie Reviews. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and like me on Facebook. If Jarvis does not put the links down below in the description, you can always Google it. Life of Thor Costly. Have a great day, everybody.